Hey guys, my name is Afenton Nuldubi, your currency trader and currency coach at FX Link, and you are tuned into our Sunday's week to market preparation. Enjoy! Space and it's something that I also went through, and I think many of you who are successful at this point also went through this phase. Well, as a beginning trader, we all come across people who say to us they can offer us a hundred percent signal service, and people usually get trapped. So this brings us to the topic of probability theory. If you are a successful trader and have been trading for a while now, you will know that in forex trading there isn't actually any strategy that is a hundred percent. In fact, in order to be a profitable trader, you don't even need a system that is 100%. All you really need is a system that offers you a positive expectancy of 50% upwards. And from there, this is where you add money management and your risk management to your factor your trading factor. So to kick off things, this week we'll be taking a look at the part in the end and throughout the video we'll be tackling the issue of probability theory and how it plays out in the market. Looking in the chart, it's quite even in the past section has been in an uptrend. If I could grab my tool from this lowest low up to where price section is currently at, you can see that price section is sloping in an uptrend. But a more interesting thing is that if I could try to clone our tool and take it to the upside, you can see that price section has been in the, in the channel. Now this is just the first clue that this isn't a solid strong uptrend because if it was we would expect person to give us a clear sequence of higher highs higher lows but instead we keep hitting our lower upper channel hitting our lower channel so taking a closer look to where price action is currently at you can see that price action is back at a significant structure level where if i could grab my tool you can see that we have a, we have a nice support area we have more resistance we have a bit of a support over here and more support and it, if you could scroll back to the chart you can see that this is a significant structure level and what we have over here a nice resistance area now what I, what I usually like to do in order for me to keep note of my structure levels I like to draw my DSR levels and I'll take the, my triangle to from this area and I'll drag it across to where price section is currently at and this is for me to filter out all important structure levels so now and as you can see again in some mention price section is at a significant sub demand level we back at the lower at the lower channel line now Currently looking at my RSI, you can see the price action has set an oversold state, showing that giving us the first sign that we might expect to see an exhaustion from sellers momentum. So now, in this case, I'm expecting price action to give me a bit of a relief to the upside. And this is where I'll be looking to hop in this short long in opportunity. Now this all goes back to what, what we were talking about in the beginning of the video, probability theory. Now why am I saying that I expect precision to give me a bit of a relief? When the market moves in, in a wave sequence, meaning it, it had to go up, give us a retracement, give us a bit of a retracement to the downside, continue up, and another retracement, and the cycle continues. Where when the market is going up, it doesn't really shoot straight up to the upside. Conversely, when the market's going down, we have to see a sequence of lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower lies. The market doesn't just shoot straight down. And if you could apply this mentality to where the market is at this point, Pasek has given us a shot to the downside. So this is where I might expect to get a bit of a relief to the upside. Now, this might look like a small move, but keep in mind that this is a daily chart. This is our higher time frame. This is where we just want to get the direction of the market. A small move on the daily chart could offer me close to 100 pips to my lower time frame. So again, one would argue that 
can I, can I, am I willing to bet all my money on the theory that Prasek needs to give me just a relief to the upside? And of course, no. I can just place my money on anticipation that I should get a relief. So this is where my all my filters come in check. When I say filters this way, I talk about my retracement tool. So the first thing we could do is I could grab my retracement tool. From this X, from this X leg up to our A, you can see that we have a, a 618 right below our structure level. So I could grab this and just to widen our kill zone. So this is where we have a 618. And again, we could grab our, our retracement tool from this small and Kalu move. We could grab from my X to A. And then let's try to zoom in to get a better view. Now, now as you can see, press action has violated our 618 structure level, meaning. We would expect PlayStation to at least relate really down to our 786, but this is our minor retracement tool. On our major retracement tool, we have a 1618 at the lower end of our channel box. Now, this is how we could try to grab our tool just to narrow down our 786 and 618 cluster. Just around this area, and we could try to change the color. And here yeah, we do. So, because our first kill zone was was a white area and we tried to use our retracement tool just to find that cluster to narrow down our kill zone you use your technical analysis to increase the probability of being right in the market but that doesn't guarantee you that you will be 100 percent accurate so let's switch down to our lower time frame now on the 60 minutes which is our execution time frame this is where we just want to pinpoint an exact area that will be taking our trade. Now, in order to do so, this from this anchor leg, this is where I take my extension to, and I'll grab this from my X leg down to my A, and I drag it right up. You can see that we have significant extension level. Extension level are just key turning points for where this move will terminate. If ever we do get a lead to the downside, you can see that. Our extension leg terminates right where we have a 1414, and this is where we had our kill zone. Now, because we have three significant levels, which is a 127, a 1414, and a 1618, how exactly do we know which level to pay more attention on? Now, this is where I would add what I call an ABCD pattern. From next A to B move, what I usually do, I take this move. And clone it. This will show me just a key area where price action might terminate. And as you can see, this say price action should terminate right where we have a 1414, right at the beginning of our kill zone. And the last thing that I was looking at, as you can see, our other side is currently in the middle of nowhere. If I were looking for a buying opportunity, then I'd have to wait for price action to at least give me a push. To at least give me a push, hit the hit my oversold state, and from there I'll wait for a bullish divergence. And after getting my filters in check, this is where I'll be ready to take the trade. So assuming that everything goes in play and price action does give me a really to this area, this is where I'll be looking to take a position on this market. Assuming the price action does terminate at the area. And before you take the trade, of course, you have to wait for more filters. Depends on your style of trading. As soon as market does give us a ready to this area, this is where one gets to what I like to call a decision point. Where you can choose that. Will you will you be willing to go aggressively? Meaning, as soon as price section has this area, is this where you will looking to put your pending order. To be triggered immediately when it hits this area. Or, I the type of trader that says, okay, it's fine. I'll wait for price action to really down to this area and I'll wait for certain confirmations. Usually we all have a different confirmations, but my confirmations are double bottom. As soon as market hits this area, I'll wait for to get a double bottom. And from there I wait for a higher 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 close. And this is this is the, the full time we're waiting for to take this trade. 
So again, this is where you just get at a decision point. It depends on your style of trade and your appetite of trade. So assuming that everything goes our way, this is where I'd have my entry point. And my stop loss will, would have to be below my, my lowest low. But in order to be safe in this case, I'd prefer to put my stop loss below my kill zone. And as you can see, this, this will give us a wide risk, risk to reward. So if you don't have a large appetite for risk like I do, this is where you have to get a low, a lowest low. And after getting that, possibly you will put a stop loss just a few pips below that low. And the first take profit will have to be back at a retail sort of structure. And if you're looking for extended targets, this is where you'll be looking to ride the market way up back to the structure level. So, in this first case, the market could offer you a potential risk to reward, a risk of 56 pips for a total reward of 139. Pretty good start for the week, but as I mentioned again, going back to our first topic, probability theory. This is all a probability game. The market can come to this area and stop us. The market might not even hit this level and just run away from me. But how do I know how to do this? This is where your technical analysis come in. Your technical analysis should help you increase your probability. It doesn't give you a 100% strategy, but helps you create a more probability, a more high probability trade. So I hope you enjoyed our video, guys. If you liked our content, please make sure to hit the like button. Comment if there's something you need clarification on and please please make sure to share this with your friends friends of friends and family For me your friends and all do it. This is it for this week I hope you enjoy your week have a profitable week and I'll see you on the flip side